Now then, have you ever wondered whether you should be doing more before you head out running? More than simply whacking your running shoes on, lacing them up and heading out of the door? Well, yeah, you're definitely onto something. After all, we can experience up to three times our body weight through each stride. That's an awful lot for your body to deal with if it isn't prepared. So here are my six things, go-to things in fact, that you should do before you run. Okay, so first tip or first thing to do before you run, and this one is to do with our glutes. Now, fortunately, many of us spend probably more time than we'd like sat down at desks having to do work and then trying to cram in runs around that. Now, the side effect or the knock-on effect to being sat down for significant amounts of time per day is that our glute muscles, our big muscles on our backside, simply switch off. It doesn't mean we lose strength in them, but they simply don't initiate, kick in and activate when we want to run. And that can have also significant knock-on effects to our technique and that can result in niggles, injuries, as we start to lose sort of tracking up our legs and the gait. So I appreciate not all of us have a ton of time before we run. So this one just requires around one to two minutes of quick glute activation to get them working. So when you run, they're firing away. So good exercises for this is a glute bridge. You can progress that to something like a single leg glute bridge. You can also do some quick and easy clams, just laying down on your side on the ground or very simply doing some shallow squats to a bench or seat. Okay, my second thing to think about and to do before you head out for your run is to think about your hydration. Now, I think we're all guilty of having busy days and simply forgetting to drink and think about our hydration, getting to the end of the day and realizing you've barely had anything, if anything at all on some days. Now, this can have serious knock-on consequences. Not only simply that run, but also it can hamper your recovery for subsequent runs after that and really make you feel pretty lousy and unwell. So. Make sure you're staying on top of your hydration throughout the day if you are planning to run at lunch or later in the day, or if you're getting up early in the morning to head out for a run first thing, just allow yourself a little bit of time to get some fluids in you. Additionally, do think about electrolytes. Whilst water is fantastic, also you are losing electrolytes when you exercise, so make sure you're replacing those as you go. Okay, next up, fueling. Now this is very similar to hydration in the fact that many of us can end up heading out for a run and suddenly realizing we probably haven't fueled adequately enough. I'm certainly guilty of this, particularly if I'm doing an evening run and I haven't eaten since lunchtime, I can end up feeling very hungry and just not well fueled for that run ahead. So answer to this is either making sure you plan your meals throughout the day around your running or go prepared with some snacks. Now. Fueling does, however, come with some additional complications in the fact that our body has to digest and process that food. If you eat a big lunch or dinner and then head out for a run, that food is still in your stomach trying to be digested and you can end up feeling rather unwell as a result. So normally we recommend somewhere in the region of two to three hours for a big meal or alternatively, obviously, making sure you keep topped up with snacks. And now it's time to run. Well, not quite actually. I mean, many of us feel like because we're heading for a run, we've got to get out of the door and start running at a solid pace straight away. That's not really the case. I mean, our body needs time to warm up, particularly our muscles, limbs, joints, we need to mobilize them. And this is particularly so if you're waking up first thing in the morning and heading out for a run then. Instead, just head out and start walking. Now get your body moving, get those muscles warmed up and get those joints mobilized. And then you can build from there into a gentle jog and then into a run. Okay, next one, leg swings. Now this one isn't essential before every run. However, I do quite like to do these before a hard workout where I'm gonna be going at higher speeds. It just helps to loosen the legs off again and also just open them out a little bit more, ready for kind of extending out through the hip region and just running at higher speeds. This is one that you probably want to do when you're warmed up a little bit, so don't do it first thing in the morning, just 
after you've woken up. Perhaps maybe just do a little bit of a walk or jog, get yourself warmed up and then stop, do some leg swings. Okay, my final thing to do before you head out running is to give a little bit of attention to your ankles and feet. I think we can all be guilty for taking our ankles and feet for granted, despite how much they do for us when we run. Now, I am certainly giving these far more respect these days as I get a little bit older. So one thing that I like to do is just some gentle, light ankle circles just to get the joints mobilized and nice and loose. Another thing is obviously walking, that's going to do that really nicely as well. And then also just doing some gentle calf raises, that's going to get the muscle nicely warmed up, but also it will loosen and glide the plantar fasciitis, which is an area that takes quite a lot of force when you're running. Well, there we have it, my six things to do before you head out running. I hope it's been helpful for you guys today. You have probably noticed, however, that I haven't talked so much about stretching, and that is because I would suggest you avoid any static stretching when you're cold prior to a run. It's okay to do it, more so once you are warm or doing some dynamic stretching. Um, but yeah, do avoid doing any static stretching when you're cold. Well, there we go. I hope you have enjoyed it. If so, please do give it a thumbs up, give it a like. And if you'd like to see more videos from us at GTN, make sure you're subscribed just down below.